Hey everybody, it's Crystal. How are you doing? I've been working hard all day um, on the content for my new class that's coming up. And I just recorded something and it was so powerful to me. Like I felt the energy the entire time, like my crown chakra blew out. It was like, yes, I need to share this with my people because I realize that not everybody in the Lightworkers Lab is going to be a part of the Angels class. Shockingly, shockingly because it's going to be really good um so for those of you who aren't going to see the video that i just recorded a little while ago i want to i want to share it with you now because you guys mean a lot to me and i want you to really grasp and understand and get the reality of what it is that i'm about to tell you it's actually a story and it comes out of the bible don't get crazy. I already hear some of you. Bible, God, Jesus. Don't get crazy. I get it. I understand. If you know anything about me, you already know that I do not advocate for organized religion. I'm not up here advocating or advancing any kind of a group think construct. I'm not about it. In fact, I believe that true spirituality ultimately always mandates that we walk alone that we take the path by ourselves and spirituality becomes wholly experiential, meaning we have to experience it to know that it's true. No longer do we take the word of the priest, the word of the pastor or the book. We must experience it in our spirit to know that it's true. That's what real spirituality is. And that's being out on a limb, but that's the coolest part of spirituality. And when you start to experience things on a higher level, then it gets all crazy and it gets all awesome. But that's what real spirituality is. And that is what I advance. That is what I advocate for. Nonetheless, in every single sacred books, in every single sacred book, there is eternal truths. There are all the main religions were founded on an eternal truth. And then they created stories and mythology around that. And now we have religions, but the eternal things are eternal. They don't go away. And this story that's in the Bible is powerful because it reflects a principle that you need to understand. You really do. As we've been talking over the past few nights and I've been hearing the things going on in your life, I've heard the fear, I've heard the anxiety, I've heard the uncertainty, and I can relate to that on a lot of levels. And I want to tell you this story so that you can know what's really happening in your life and put it into perspective. Last night we were on live and I talked about popping up over this dimension of materiality and checking it out from a mastery level and moving things around and being the captain of your experience. And I want you to hear this story so you can achieve that level of mastery and see things as they truly are. This is the story of the prophet Elijah. Now, Elijah, as some of us know, is the prophet who was taken up in a chariot of fire. And some of us also know that Elijah, in terms of prophets, was probably the most temperamental, persnickety, and badass. Now, Elijah would go up against the high priests of other religions routinely. And they would put on these big shows, these high priests, and they'd produce their signs and their wonders. And Elijah would sit back and, you know, he's like, okay, whatever, here we go. And then it would be his turn. And he would call down the power of the one true God who he served, which is just source energy or the universe or whatever you want to call it. But he would call down the energy and he would blow them all away. And his God was greater every single time. In fact, every single time to the extent that the queen of that day, who was of another religion and who sent out her high priests all the time to do battle with Elijah. Well, she got pretty mad. She got tired of it. She was feeling some kind of way. <laughs> and so she told her soldiers, kill that guy. I'm, I'm over it. Make that guy dead. Dirt bat. It's time. And word of this got to Elijah. Never before in the story of Elijah in the Old Testament do we even suspect that Elijah is scared of anything because he knows who he serves. But this is the first time he hears about the queen. Her name is Jezebel. He hears about the hit that Jezebel has put out on him and he is rocked by it. He is afraid and he starts to run. He knows they're coming after him. 
He doesn't stand in place and do battle as he always has. He runs. And there's passages and passages and passages where he's running for his life and he's all caught up in fear. Do you relate to that? He's all caught up in anxiety. He's all caught up in the uncertainty of what's to come. I relate that. I can relate to that. Can you relate to that? There's even this part in the story where Elijah's hiding out in this cave, deep in this cave, and God is outside the mouth of the cave, and he's making thunder and lightning and hail and all manner of racket to get Elijah's attention and say, what are you doing? You don't need to hide from anybody. I'm the one true God. But Elijah doesn't hear it. Elijah doesn't see God in the, in the weather or in the evidences, he's consumed by his fear. And at some point, Elijah picks up again and he keeps on a running. Passage after passage, adventure after adventure, Elijah caught up in his fear until one day on a road somewhere, God finally gets his attention. Elijah, stop, stop for one, can you stop for one second? And Elijah hears it and he stops. And God says to Elijah, and of course I'm paraphrasing this entire thing, but God says to Elijah, turn around. Turn around and look at the mountains. I want you to see something. I want you to see things as they truly are. And so Elijah turns around and he looks at the mountains. And there, spread across the mountains, is a host of angels. More angels than he could even count, ever could count. They were chariots, there's Michael, there's swords. They are assembled man on his behalf, on the top of these mountains. And Elijah has eyes to see in that one moment. He sees, oh my God, these angels have been with me the whole time. He realizes these angels were with me in that cave. These angels have been tracking me mile after mile as I've been running for my life. I've had these resources the whole time. What have I been doing? And he gets it. He sees it. Sometimes we have to see to believe. It is better, however, to believe in order to see. But he sees it. He gets it. And he's emboldened by it. Oh, and he goes back. Okay, he goes back. And suffice it to say, Jezebel falls from a window in her castle and is eaten by dogs, and so it doesn't go very well for her or her high priests. And at some point, Elijah is taken up in the chariot of fire, and he doesn't even die. He doesn't die. God takes him up, and he's transformed and transmuted into the archangel Sandalphon, where he acts to this day all over the planet on our behalf, light workers. Elijah is still concerned with light workers, those people who were born at this time to shift it and to help the ascension process because he's already been through it. Not unlike Metatron, who is the only other man in the Bible who never died. Enoch, both of those cats, those archangels whom I love, they're all about people like you and me and they're here to help us. But in his life, Elijah was human. And we're human, aren't we? And sometimes we're gripped with fear and anxiety, and sometimes it's that white hot fear that just takes your breath away. We're in our own caves. We're huddled down, and God is outside the mouth of the cave saying, Crystal, what are you afraid of? It always works out. I'm on your side. Turn around, check it out, and see what's real about this situation. You have access to all of that. You've always had access to all of that. You still do, and you will tomorrow. How does that make you feel? Isn't that a good feeling? God has given his angels charge over you. That means that's what they're about, to take care of you. Know that. Turn around. See that. And there's nothing. There's nothing that you have to fear. God bless. Mm -hmm.